right, guys. Well, we have continued our journey north, and we are here at the Fess Parker Ranch with Katie McDonald. She is one of the brains behind the operation. Yes. She and her husband, Rocky, are incredible. Um, I actually met her a couple years ago. We were up filming a, a docu-series with Discovery. Sorry. That was a lot of fun. Oh, my God. It was so cool, and I was just so blown away by you. <laughs> like, I know we were there to see John Cox, who's also incredible, but I was like, this girl is so badass. She's is. a champion wrangler, um, and she's running this really cool California Wagyu program here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So can you tell everybody just a little bit about what you do here at the ranch? What we do here at the ranch? Well, we have our, our beef program, which is kind of my facet of it. Our family's huge. We're, we're built of wineries and breweries and hotels. So Rocky and I run the cattle program, and um, it's based around Wagyu beef which is kind of a unique breed, which I stumbled across. It's another story. But yeah, and we what we really emphasis on is integrating it in with the family. So um, using sustainability, we use grape pumice from the winery, brewer's grain from my brother's brewery. We do everything in-house, on the land, um, and try to keep it as full circle as we can. So cool. And we're here in the middle of harvest, so things are yes. going in full swing. The cattle have plenty of food. <laughs> they do have plenty of food. Oh my gosh. So we saw them this morning. They are hungry, fellas, and they come running to your voice, which I don't blame them. You have a really nice voice. Oh, oh thank you. My grandma would have been happy to hear that. <laughs> Can you do the call? Oh, geez. It's a little embarrassing. Uh, it's okay. Just give, them, just give them a taste. I thought it was so beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's it's comprised of, come on. Yeah. And hey, mamas. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, ooh. So I just call for them. Oh, my gosh. It kind of reminds me. So when I was little, my grandma used to call for us in a crowd. And I always thought it was so incredibly embarrassing. But she would hoot like an owl. She would go, whoo, whoo. And we would all just like, oh, gosh, grandma's here. <laughs> you know, it's terrible. So now when I do it, that's every time I, that's what I think of is think my grandma, grandma hooting for us. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. My dad has the best whistle. And you can hear it. It was so embarrassing when we were kids. We're very like, distinct. oh, God. Yeah, very distinct. You know you're in trouble when you hear it. Oh, geez. oh God. Now I hear it. I'm like, oh, that's tender. But <laughs> back in those days, I knew I was in for a whooping. Oh, oh my yeah. word. Hear the whistle and run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> as far as you can. Um, so you guys are doing California Wagyu here. What does that mean exactly? Well, California Wagyu. Um, first and foremost, it's raised here in California. Um, you know, and I like to really emphasize either California or American Wagyu because I don't in any way want to cause any disrespect to, you know, Japanese Wagyu because I think that's a really special thing, uh, what they've created there and, you know, their culture and everything that's put into it. It's a really incredible beast. Um, so, yeah, first and foremost, raised here in California, you know, we definitely dabble in a lot of the bloodlines that are direct descendants and straight out of Japan uh, when they let the animals come over way back when. But yeah, definitely has to be from California or America. Yeah. American yeah. Wagyu. So what is what you're feeding them? What does that do to the flavor profile? You know, it just makes it amazing. <laughs> <laughs> true. True story. Um, well, I think it does a few things. I mean, it definitely has a unique taste in my mind. I mean, but that everybody has their own opinion on, on meat and flavor profile. Um, I think it's really unique, too, when you get to pair it with you know, one of the Fess Parker wines or uh, one of my brother's beers from Third Window because that's literally what they're eating is the byproduct of those. But I, I've had chefs comment on it and they've they've said a million different things, but it definitely has its own unique taste. Mm -hmm. And most people are blown away. You know, they're like, whoa, wh what are you doing here? What is this? Yeah. Some people have said it's uh, earthy. Some people, you know, talk about like terroir. Some people talk about you know, referencing certain like deep, rich red wines. I mean, mm -hmm. it kind of, I think everybody's a little bit different in terms of explaining how it's going to taste, but it, it's yeah. definitely different for sure. Yeah. It really, I think it, uh, anytime you've had a uh, pastured beef that's been raised by people who care about it, you yes, can really tell. Um, you and I were chatting about this. We were riding horseback this morning. I think you can really tell when cattle has been treated well uh, in the flavor of the meat it's very clear to me you know when when it's raised and fed and slaughtered properly yes ma'am so you guys are kind of doing now almost almost closed loop because technically in the california and i think throughout the united states you can't actually slaughter on property usually unless Correct. there's a mobile slaughterhouse but you take it nearby we right? do we do we take it nearby that's that's another huge part to our story you know the last thing i want after i've spent almost three years with this animal is to send it to like a big commercial plant and you know just completely stop the connection i have with my product 
Um, so we found like a little mom and pop place where they're USDA certified, inspected, killed. Um, and then some of the carcasses we actually bring back to a little butcher shop here in town. Cool. Where again, it's still USDA certified and we can actually butcher them and cut them up ourselves and really get some unique cuts for Amazing. certain clients. What butcher shop is that? Um, you know, it, it really doesn't have a name. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's here. It's privately owned in Los Livos. Mm -hmm. um, and the gentleman that owns it, he used to be a USDA inspector and butcher for, shoot, I don't know how many years, a million. Yeah. Yeah. But he has this great spot and it's kind of a little hidden secret. And we stumbled across it um, through some mutual friends and got it all certified and inspected and yeah, it's been cool. It's been pretty neat, you know, to find good butchers, especially this day and age, is really tough. And there's so few and far between that, you know, to, to really get the quality that you're trying to get at the end when you have these amazing animals, you know, when they're cut and presented is huge. You know, people judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. It's natural. You know, you look at something, you say, that looks good. I want that one. Mm -hmm. So if something's not cut perfectly or trimmed beautifully or packaged, it's you know, it's a little bit tougher, especially in the retail kind of side of our market. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to go back a little bit to uh, this, the slaughter process, because yes, I know that when, you know, I've, I've read, I think it was in uh, Omnivore's Dilemma, mm -hmm. when that's happening, the, you know, the traditional slaughterhouse, the cortisol levels are going sky high because yes, you just even the noises there. That just gave me goosebumps when you said that, actually. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's, I, it, it, yeah, it's just reading it's, about it sounds scary. So tell me about, I know you had a pretty, um, very personal experience with that. How did that feel? I did. When I went to that first plant, when I first started this business, um, it, I just, I drove up and I just, my gut kind of twisted and I knew, I was like, this isn't right for me. This, this isn't a part of our story. This isn't a part, this, this is not what I want, mm -hmm. especially for the end. This isn't it. Um, but you know, if you actually kind of look into the scientific part of it, when the animal's stressed, you have all of that going into the meat, then it's called what's dark cutter cutters. So your meat's going to be really dark. It's oh. going to be tougher. You lose marbling. So it, it really, um, devalues your product. So it was super important to me to find a place that was as close in my mind to what it should be, you know, real done by hand, quiet on a ranch, you know what? So, mm -hmm. so you're kind of respecting like the process and the animal, so to yeah. speak, it's not going through a big commercial plant and done by a machine and you know, it's, it's done real the sure. way it should be done. Yeah. The way it should be done. And it's a, a lost art form. It seems like I feel definitely like... a lost art form. Yeah. For sure. Do you think, um, I don't want to, I, I'm in 36 years old, so I feel like a lot of m my parents, my dad grew up in Iowa, my mom grew up in Wyoming, they got out of there as soon as they could. The families yeah. were like, we got to move to the big city, you yeah. know, this is not the life for us. <laughs> and then therefore, they, my parents' generation are like, mm, far, like farming was kind of like the not cool thing. Yeah. Do you think it's kind of coming, coming back, if you will? Oh, definitely right now, especially with COVID. I yeah. mean, if you don't know where your food's coming from or how to get it in a pinch, I think you're crazy. I mean, when, when grocery stores were struggling to keep food on the shelves and, you know, people couldn't get meat at Costco and they were limiting everything. I mean, that, that's really kind of a reality and a wake up check, like know where your food comes from and know where to get it yeah. or know how to make it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. For sure. <laughs> and you guys, your business really picked up during COVID. Yeah. It did a lot. It, it brought a huge awareness to people you know, to start looking into where does my food come from? Where can I get food? You know, what, and just learn about it. People asking questions. I've had a lot of people, uh, want to buy half steers, whole steers, stock their freezers, um, all kinds of things. So yeah, yeah it's been really good. Can you do that? Do you sell? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Definitely. cool. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, stock your freezer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I want to. We're heading into the winter time. Winter is coming. Yeah, and it's like, stock all right, up. it's time to start thinking about it. And it, it really did, I think, this time made us all so conscious of our of the supply chain, right? Because you're hearing about not only the shortages, the food shortages, yeah. but also the working conditions, you know, for people who are working in those processing plants. Like, that is just not, it's not something that's good for the animals, clearly. It's in the not even good the for food. the people. I mean, you're yeah. all in there in this tiny little plant, shoulder to shoulder, processing everything as fast as you can. Yeah. I mean, and I, I don't want to talk bad about any anybody's business or industry or their job but it's it wasn't for me it wasn't right. the way I felt it should be right what drew you to Wagyu cattle specifically they're so cute by the way guys they're like they look like <laughs> you know, teddy bears they're so fluffy we were out there and they I was are like, right oh, now because it's winter time yeah. but normally I mean it, it's another don't judge a book by its cover kind of thing because my whole life well, my start was bucking bulls, and that's how I met my husband. Different story, but you well, know, tell traditionally, us that. you always tell us that. Your start was in bucking bulls. So I used to raise bucking yeah. bulls, and yeah. uh, I would, you know, travel across the United States mm -hmm. hauling my bulls. I was one of the only women in the industry at the time, so it was pretty interesting. Um, 
and I went to one event, and my husband drew one of my bulls. His name was Mighty Whitey. Yeah. And he ended up winning the event on him. Yeah. And we met later that night after I was done feeding and graining all my animals, and I just couldn't get rid of him. Yeah. Ever since. Yeah, yeah. I was stuck with him. Yeah. <laughs> I married the dang guy <laughs> twice. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I started with bucking bulls, and they're beautiful animals and such a misconception there, too. People think they're so big and mean and scary. Half of mine were like horses, as gentle as my horses. Wow. You could go pet them and scratch them. And then when they get to an event, their adrenaline's going, and they love it. You know, if, yeah. if I had a trailer with a door left open, those bulls would jump on the trailer and say, let's go to town, let's go to work. Wow. You know, they love doing what they do. They're like bovine racehorses. You know, wow. I put more time and effort and nutrition into those animals than I did myself. They yeah. ate better than I did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they really need animals. Yeah. But going back to the beef stuff and Wagyu, you know, you, you think of um, a beef steer and it's this big, pretty, fat, nice, shapely looking thing. Mm-hmm. Wagyus are kind of pitiful to look at. You know, they're they're not very big. They're not very, like, meaty looking or mm-hmm. fancy. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to the first time when uh, Rocky and I, I did take them up to the butcher. I thought, you know, we took them up there and they were great bloodlines and we did everything by the book the way you're supposed to do it. And they start, you know, skinning them and doing everything. And you don't see like that big fat cover. And mm. Rocky and I looked at each other and we're like, oh my gosh, how, how did this happen? Yeah. This animal that's supposed to be so marbled and, yeah. you know, perfectly finished. How, how is this happening? And the, the butcher's looking at us like, I don't know. Are you sure this is a Wagyu? Yeah. Well, then you start to look inside at the cuts and it's the fat's not on the outside, like an Angus or a traditional beef steer. It's yeah. all on the inside, just webbed and snowflaked through the cuts. So it's beautiful. You know, he looked at it and he's like, wow, this is never seen anything like this before. This is beautiful meat. Yeah. But at first, you know, looking at it, we were terrified. Yeah. Like, what <laughs> this is it. This, this is years. what we were waiting for. <laughs> this is terrible. How, oh my God. I can only imagine because it it's about a three year cycle, you said? Oh, well, yeah. you know, the cow's bred breeder, nine months um, being pregnant. And then by the time that baby comes out, you've got anywhere from 24 to 36 month window until they're finished. Mm. So I spend quite a bit of time with them. Yeah. Yeah. What? So what is the difference? I like thinking of like maybe not even, I mean, Harris Ranch is pretty big, but I, they're mm-hmm. still not even one of the, the bigger places. And not to name name names or anything, but just compared to a more conventional operation, can can you describe what you what you're doing differently? Like, well, conventionally, I mean, it's you put cattle into a feedlot situation, and you want to get them as fat as you can, as fast as you can, for as cheap as you can. Those go against everything that I'm trying to do with this animal. Um, you know, commercial animals, they're over years designed genetically to do that, to perform well in a feedlot. You know, they. They're going to get big and fat fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Wagyu, they're like three times as slow. They're very slow to mature. They don't do well on corn. They do better on grain. Mm-hmm. They're a much slower beast to get to where you want. So it's not so much um, like a target weight we're after, like a commercial cow. It's days on feed. Um, mm. So it's kind of our style, which, again, it takes a lot longer. It's a lot more expensive. It's a lot more time. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it, it's a lot more risk. The animal could get sick. We have to keep them a lot longer. Sure. But in my opinion, the, the end result is definitely worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm really excited. We had it um, when we were here the first time filming that uh, docuseries with uh, Discovery, which was yeah. fantastic. But I'm really curious to see it with your brother's <laughs> beer. I mean, that's so cool. I don't know if that was the brewery's newer or no. When did um, that happen? Did we just not see it? No. Yeah. You just didn't see it. It was going at that time. Oh, yeah. God, we missed out. I feel like. Yeah. I, this is well, great. It's so yeah. big. Our yeah. family's yeah. huge. And yeah. we have so many yeah. different little facets yeah. kind of tucked away everywhere, which is, it was such a genius idea. My grandpa kind of you know, when he started all of this, yeah. he wasn't one to give us things. He wanted to give us opportunities. Right. So whether it was right. like restaurant industry, hotel industry, you that. know, in the vineyards, on the ranch, there's literally something for everybody. Totally. And now your kids are learning too. They're so darling. They are. They're <laughs> handy. That's why you have kids. I know. Exactly. I'm like, oh God, I got to get on that. Oh my word. Oh, I need to move out here and just have some ranch babies. <laughs> So cute. So um, something you talked about with me earlier when we were riding around was the sort of the process of, you know, typically they're they're raised and then they're finished mm-hmm. and then slaughtered. They're, they're these different places and they're being moved around all the time, usually in a typical conventional yes, place. Yeah, being... There's three different categories. There's either a, a cow-calf operation where a gentleman has the cows, breeding the cows, they have the babies, um, and then they'll go into like a... A pasture situation where a rancher will buy them 
at say six months and he'll put them out on his pasture and feed them out uh, and then when they get big enough they'll send them off to a feedlot guy mm. who's the third step in the process and that guy will get them ready to go to the butcher but it's super super rare that you find somebody that does all three steps you know a because it's a huge initial investment i mean you're not getting to turn that calf over at six months like most ranchers we hold on to it for a return in three years mm -hmm. um, and then again you know, you, it's just more of a risk. That animal could get sick. That animal could die. Something could happen. Uh, say feed circumstances change or the weather changes or there's a fire or, you know, there's so right. many different variables. But sure. it's definitely a lot tougher to do. Yeah, I can imagine so. And I imagine it's tough to do as a woman, too. What is it like to be a woman in oh, your man. field? My husband doesn't really let me think that way. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the guys. We work, we work pretty uh, <laughs> side by side. And, you know, he's definitely... It, it's hard because I'm not as physically strong, especially since I broke my back a couple years ago. But um, I think in terms of brains and skill, I'm just as handy. Yeah. Um, it's it's harder in other senses because, you know, in business dealings or things, I don't get taken as seriously as a man, which sure. it happens. You know, you just keep plugging along through it. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I just kind of keep my head down and I don't let anybody give me any any gruff yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> just do it <laughs> I'm scared I saw her with a lasso early yeah. and I was like I am not messing with this girl oh my god watch yeah, out most people look at me and they're like what my favorite <laughs> when I first met my husband we went to Texas to his family's ranch and I think we were working sheep at that time and I showed up and they they put me on this like kind of plug horse you know because I'm from California oh, yeah. and I was dressed cute you know yeah, I wasn't dressed yeah, like a yeah. cowgirl yeah and they put me on this horse and I started roping a lot of like their uh, sheep. They call them woolies. They're big lambs that get away. They're big rams. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they're like, heck, you're kind of handy. And I'm like, oh, what? because I'm a girl from California doesn't mean I'm handy. Come on, guys. <laughs> Hello. What a stereotype. Oh, she's a girl from California. Come on. Yeah. They don't judge a book by its cover. Exactly. Yeah. I'll sneak up and get you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been doing this here for a while now, but uh, I think the thing that's really interesting about this part of the Central Coast in California is the history of cattle ranching, cattle wrangling, and therefore amazing barbecue. Um, can you talk a little bit about the history in the area? Um, the history in the area. Well, I know way back when, I think the early 1800s, the Spanish explorers came over bringing religion and, you know, they put in their missions and all of that. And I think they brought about 200 head of cattle over here, which was the introduction to beef here in California. Yeah. Brought meat and tallow and hides. And, you know, from there, it just continued to grow with uh, like the gold rush when that came and hit. But it really started a whole economy. It gave them a huge source of food. Yeah. Sure, sure, and then the sort the the, the ranchos kind of came from there, and yeah, and then yeah. the ranches kept kept going. People needed to eat. They needed tallow. They needed hides. They needed leather. They needed saddles and clothes and candles and and all kinds of things. I mean, so many things in this day and age come from cattle or products from cattle. You know, yeah. it, a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. Oh, what's one thing that you we think we'd be surprised by that we didn't know it come lipstick. From? Oh, whoa, yeah. that's right. That's why there's vegan lipstick. Yeah, lipstick. Milk <laughs> makes amazing vegan lipstick. Yeah. I love them. They're our studio lipstick. that we rent our, our gear from, actually. They're so helpful. Um, they helped us solve some gear issues on the way out of town. It was like a major red camera crisis. So yeah. great lipstick, great cameras, <laughs> rent from milk. We love you guys. <laughs> Before we keep rolling, I've got a quick note from our sponsor, RV Share. For me, there's no greater joy than the freedom of the open road. And what better way to do that than keeping all of the comforts of home while you're on the move? I'm talking about planning an RV road trip. RV Share is the largest RV rental website with thousands of awesome RVs to choose from nationwide. So turn your daydreams into reality like I did and head to RVShare.com today. That's RVShare.com where you can find the perfect RV for your next adventure. Now, back to our episode. If you guys ever get the chance to come to Central California, which by the way, you absolutely should, one of the big things here is Santa Maria style barbecue. It is something I am always looking out for, um, whether it's in a parking lot or you're sitting down at the hitching post, it is <laughs> phenomenal. Um, and it just runs the gamut. So um, what is that exactly? And uh, yeah. where's your favorite place to get it most importantly? Well, what is it exactly? Usually um, it's a tri-tip. So tri-tip is like the equivalent of a brisket in Texas. Mm -hmm. If you go to Texas, I don't know what a tri-tip is and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really difficult piece of meat to cook, uh, but cooked correctly. It's amazing. Mm. They cook it on a, like an open flame style barbecue. And it's just, it's incredible. I don't know much about the history or, or why it came to be, but I'm glad it did. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, thank, 
Bless. I feel like I've read somewhere that, and don't quote me on this, guys, but I do think it was something to do with the ranchos. So, um, the the folks who were farming the land um, in like the Kelly. Possibly, not, I'm sure yeah. it, it's a really cheap piece if yeah. you don't know what it is. You only yeah. get two per animal. They're usually two and a half to three and a half pounds. Yeah, they're not very big. Yeah, and you know, like I was saying, same as a brisket. If you don't know how to cook it, it's it's really not useful to you. Right. So it would be something that would be sold very inexpensively, like mm-hmm. just to move it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it definitely has grown and it's huge here. Huge. And Fantastic. it's a, yeah, it's a really cool style too. It's um you've got the the, the grill, the plancha, mm-hmm. and then there's this big crank yep. that you can um and it's all over open flame and you crank it up and down yep. depending upon, you know, if you want more char and it, um it's a really easy I think to control That's the, the heat. That's the best exposure. when they get that char on the outside and then uh-huh. it's just like perfectly cooked in the inside oh it's god it's so incredible. good it's almost like they like the burnt ends if mm-hmm. you I love burnt ends in yep. texas so it's the a tips. similar thing you guys you gotta come up and try this <laughs> stuff and and have a bottle of some maybe some fess parker wine I maybe don't know. this is lovely by the way cheers thank you yes ching, ching. it is fantastic <laughs> <laughs> no. this is the we're drinking some pinot rosé because it is it's still a hot day even though we're you know here and it's fall yeah Summer oh came God. back to visit. It, just, it never <laughs> left. Let's be honest. Is it ever leaving SoCal? My God. Yeah, not too often. No, Seriously. Oh, my gosh. So do you, what you're doing here, would, would you say that this is a, considered a sustainable way of, of ranching cattle? What are some of the negative side effects, I guess, of, of, of cattle ranching that you may be mitigating by the way you're doing things? Um, you know, well, you have just the cost of commodities. If I were feeding corn or grains, you know, I would be really reliant on the market what are the prices doing you know and i would be in competition with everybody else that's trying to feed that commodity same with hay uh, if it was a drought year and they had to put the sprinklers on and turn on more water hay is going to be more expensive and harder to find mm-hmm. um, what i use is basically trash <laughs> yeah, you know they're, yeah. they're getting rid of it it's going yeah. to compost somewhere else yeah you know, i use all the great pumice from our winery um, i've also now because i've expanded i pick it up from other wineries that are just right here next door to us um, and then the brewer's grain from my brother's beer brewery and other breweries around him. And all of it is just stuff that, you know, goes to waste or someone creative like us will come along and, and feed it to something. I know it's really popular to feed to pigs as well. Ooh, uh, yeah. yeah, so that's that's the next step in what we're doing. We do, you know, our Wagyu beef and we've got our lamb program. But we also have some Magalitza pigs, which we are <gasps> getting ready to unveil, which should be pretty exciting oh my god <laughs> kind of like scoop, scoop round art. out my barnyard yes you know? <laughs> oh my god you said goats do you have any goats i don't have goats no get not a goat. yet get some goats have some goat get some goat milk goat cheese goats it's i good. could do goat Period. milk my uh, oh. so chris the yeah. owner of third window yeah. his wife micheline she used to do um i think maybe they're nubians but oh. she would milk them and make cheese she does mm-hmm. the sourdough bread program down there at third window yes yeah. she's Wow, I just think I met your bird friend. Uh, um, <laughs> she she does incredible oh, things too. <laughs> Acorns are dropping, birds are flying over. I feel like kind of a little bit like this. I mean, I don't want to like toot my own horn, but hearing these birds in the background reminds me of listening to Super Soul Sundays. Do you listen That's to funny. Oprah's podcast? No. Oh my God, it's the most, I mean, like, let's be honest, Oprah has a whole team and it's like Danny and I doing this whole thing. So guys, like, please be lenient. But like, I love hearing the birds chirping in the background. Yeah, it's like, peaceful. It's so peaceful. We're it's literally like in the middle of the vineyard right now and there are blue jays flying behind us. This is like a just picked row of, All I these little know. swallows. Yeah, swallows. And there's an acorn tree above us. This is an oak tree. California. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> dropping acorns on us as we speak. <laughs> know, as as we speak. <laughs> I'll be wishing, like, you know what? Let's actually take this into a studio. I get like knocked out by an acorn. <laughs> Jesus. So you're using all the, the the spent yeast from your brother's brewery mm-hmm. um, and working with other people in the community. Obviously, caring for this land, this beautiful land that's been in your family for generations. Why is this form of stewardship important to you and to your family? Well, I mean, if this land is what we live on you know this is how we live we survive if you don't take care of it it doesn't take care of you so i mean we could use the heck out of it and then uh you know reap a ton of benefits but in the long run we're just shooting ourselves in our foot we will have nothing left kind of uh, a little bit how this world's been going lately yeah so i mean we rocky and i really put a lot of thought and energy into uh, land conservation like rotating pastures monitoring grass growth um you know, just making sure that the land is healthy for sure. Yeah. It's it, truly the place you want to be when the apocalypse hits, guys, which yeah. <laughs> I think is maybe a little bit sooner than we thought it would be. Right, yeah. I know where I'm going. 
Rocky and I joke, <laughs> you know, when COVID started, everyone's like, social distancing. I'm like, shoot, we live that every day. What yeah. is the social distancing? <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously. I mean, it's like I haven't seen anybody else here. I've seen you. I've seen Rocky. We've got Danny, an amazing uh, director, videographer, sound technician, all of the above. <laughs> you know, but we haven't really even seen anybody else. It's just like, it's oh, my God, miles and miles of these rolling hills, uh, which, you know, they're beautiful, obviously, right now because they're so golden. But I can't yes, wait man. for the rain. Me too. Yeah. That's with all the acorns, all the old timers have told me when you when you get a lot of acorns hitting you in the head yeah. and you see a lot of tarantulas that's going to be a wet year so oh oh please your fingers. Lord, please <laughs> we just could use just a real good really 2020 could. all or 2021 all to round wash it all away just yes wash cleanse us cleanse us oh my gosh <laughs> who are some of the restaurants and farmers markets and like where can people actually pick up your product well i used to do a lot of restaurants before covid and uh, when that hit I backed off from a lot of the restaurants and I went more direct to consumer mm -hmm. really wanted to try to help out my community um, so now we are just mostly primarily farmers markets we do uh, Sunday in Goleta and we do Saturday in Santa Barbara and Tuesday in Santa Barbara as well mm. and then also our online sales cool and so online you would go to bestparkerranch.com bestparkerranch.com yes, and you what's like the minimum order one could do don't have one no no minimum yeah um most of it is uh, a lot of locals buy which i love because yeah. i want to feed my community sure and they come and pick up at the winery and pick up a bottle of wine and it's kind of an event yeah. um but we also ship as well we've shipped cool. across the states so even yeah. to, oh, well that's great i was gonna say like i know i know a lot of my la fans are gonna want to yes ma'am tap into that that's great Really cool. Yes, and it just comes out, you know, on like dry ice or something like that. Yes, ma'am. We put these negative uh, 10 ice blocks in there and ship it overnight. It's Neat. on your doorstep next day. Yum. Oh, my God. That sounds like heaven. <laughs> Straight from the ranch. Yes. <laughs> I go, why well, can't we just see? I'm going to probably just like pop into your brother's brewery. I'm imagining. You should. Yeah, it's, I'd love the to vibe see. there is so neat. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of outdoorsy. It's just, it's really great. Yeah. I love it. Oh, I can't wait to try it. And you're, and are you, are you guys still he's doing the, the Wagyu Slaters? He's the only restaurant, no? yeah, that I still service because oh, he's yeah. my brother. Yeah, I So mean, they do yeah. um, <laughs> our sausage and ground beef for the Sliders. Ooh, yeah. Wagyu sausage. Yeah, they're really good. Oh yeah. my God. Really good. Yum. He and just it, had his uh, Oktoberfest, his beer fest event, uh, where they did, oh man, so, uh, like so many. I think he did like 200 pounds of sausage he flew through. Damn. Yeah, it was aggressive. <laughs> you guys are all like, what an impressive family. <laughs> And like the people you want to invite to the dinner party, right? Because it's like yeah, you don't need have... to cook anything. It's like yeah, right. there's the sausage, there's the bread. Oh, she's got the the yeah, wagyu. Got the going wine. back to if the world ends, we have yeah. enough family members where we could piece it all together and make a pretty kick butt oh village. God. Oh my god! <laughs> and then there's me and Bento, and we're just like I don't know. <laughs> we could put a really great little podcast set together. Well, come on, you can come join us. I've got some grapes. <laughs> <laughs> we got grapes. Oh yes, we've got this little rapid fire session that. Danny, bless. Um, he loves to do. He's going to hit us with some questions. I don't know what they are. Oh, he dang. doesn't know what they are. Oh, gosh. Like all the way truthful? No. Yeah. yeah. Steak? Yeah. Steak. Same. Ribeye. Ribeye. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Hands down. Your ribeye, too. Pinot. Oh, uh, it depends if, it, if there's Ballard Syrah. It's been pretty good <laughs> these days. Um, I love them both, but I, generally I'm going to say Pinot. Yeah. yeah. Ashley's Vineyard Pinot yeah. is my favorite. It's Which, so good. Ashley's Vineyard? Ashley's Vineyard. Try her yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Is she? My no. aunt, my namesake. I am oh. Katie Ashley, but. Oh. Yeah, it's. It's really good. Th this is out on you, in your mm -hmm. lineup. Yes, well, we're going to have to try some. Yeah. We're going to have to pick a bottle Definitely. up. Definitely. <laughs> Done. So, okay. Cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on! <laughs> I got one! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I have another one. I wanna. RV. Okay, great. Okay, RV or RV or hotel? Kitty. RV. Yeah. Okay, 100%. Ooh, glamp. I'm glamp. Yeah, come glamp. on. I mean, like, I feel like with people, like food people, yeah, like right? we're automatically glamping. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. pretty rugged. I spend a lot of time in the dirt. So when I go camping, I want glamping. Yeah. You know, I've already been in the dirt. Yeah. I want like a shower, yeah. you know, clean bedding. <laughs> yeah, <it's> clean <laughs> no bedding. bugs. Good food, good wine. Like we can do this. It's very doable. It I'm is doable. You, this it's RV. one of these things. Come on, dude. Inside, it's nicer than my apartment. Yeah. When you put that slide out. Got a home away from home. Forget it. I would agree. Uh, yeah. Uh, whiskey or beer? Whiskey. Oh, I'm going to go for a beer on a day like today. Mm. Whiskey. Yeah. Whiskey yeah. on the rocks. Yeah. I couldn't even walk when I was on a horse. 
Oh, that's special. <laughs> yeah, mine was with Rubicon. So my family's <laughs> friend, uh, Carol Westerman, had a horse named Rubicon. And I remember we went up to the stables and I just thought, I mean, it must have been like four years old. I was little, teeny tiny. And I just Aww. thought this horse is magical. Some people, that's like, I don't know, I think neat. you just connect with them. Some people, and some people more it's than true. others. But it's definitely true. It just drew me in and I just was like, wow, this is the coolest thing. And I want this forever. Yeah, I want it forever. <laughs> Every day my mom was like, you ain't getting a pony, honey. This is the rent a pony from our friend. <laughs> like, no. Um, but it was great. I ended up going to horse camp, you know, for a couple of years later. And it was just the most, it was so cool. I would love to learn more. But it, like being able to brush them and shoe them. Well, and... I know of a fantastic place for you to learn more, actually. Hey! <laughs> I'm coming up. Cap I'm... Land and Cattle at the Post Parker Ranch. Come on. Here we go. I would, I really, that would be such a treat. Yes. It's a beautiful yeah, yeah, death. Yeah. <laughs> um, caprese salad, mm-hmm. and then let's go to steak and mashed potatoes with really good gravy because mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. like that. Uh, anywhere in the world, um, Fiji. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, I almost got spotted on again. Oh God, I've, I'm Polynesia sounds amazing. Um, I'd love to see Samoa. My boyfriend is half Samoan, and I think it looks I like, like it. a beautiful place. Yeah. And it's just very quiet. There's not a lot of infrastructure there, but I think it'd be really just a great way to just disconnect and be in the ocean. Yeah. The ocean, I'm definitely feeling the ocean. Like mm. some clean, beautiful waters, mm. tropical fish. My sea turtle friends. Yeah, my sea turtle yeah. friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about our spirit animals earlier, guys, and Katie has, uh, hers is a hawk and mine is a yes. sea turtle. Uh-huh. Yeah, we've had some pretty <laughs> tr- it's spiritual deep conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back on that horse, I'm going to tell you. It all happens on horseback. Oh, gosh. A positive yeah. word. Yeah. I'll go. I think people, empathy, just uh, empathy would be my word. Just everybody, just be kind to each other and understand we're all coming from this, you know, into this from a different place and just, just be nice and just try and understand other people's perspective. That's a good one. Uh, I think I would go with that. And if I had to add something different, I would say dare to dream, you know, dream as big as the sky is and work hard for it and it will come true. Mm. You know, I love that. Everything I've, I've built or made with my life was a dream and I aggressively tackled it my grandpa was very you know if you can dream it go get it Mm. so go get it yes (laughs) cheers to that oh goodness gracious dream big dream big um so where can everybody follow along with you and the family and what you guys are up to um well that is actually a new project for my daughter she is kind of spearheading our social media which I used to and I'm terrible at it. Farm that out. Um, yeah. So yeah. she's going to be kind of getting on Instagram and Facebook and, you know, anything that she can find to start pushing it. But Fest Parker Ranch, um, that or we're starting to merge into the name Wine and Wagyu at the Fest Parker Ranch. Oh. So, uh, yeah, that'll be our, our new deal. Love that. So wh- what does the Wine and Wagyu entail? What is it? Well, uh, you know, our Wagyu is wine fed. Yeah. Uh, primarily. And my favorite is when it's paired with a Fest Parker wine. So wine and Wagyu, no. come pick up your steaks and a bottle of wine. <laughs> I love that. That's great. All right, guys, wine and Wagyu, we're doing it. Hopefully I'm doing it very soon. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys, well, thank you so much for listening. Of course, follow along with Katie at Fest Parker Ranch and me at Krista Simmons and at Fork in the Road Media. We will see you next week for the next episode on our Fork in the Road trip. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>